me No way I could help you There's not enough time So I'll just praise Him For being so kind God has been good He's so good I have been blessed He's my shoulder to lean on when I am down on the rock where He leads me, when I'm overwhelmed, the place where He hides me, it's under His wings. He's not just a soul, He's the reason I sing, I have been blessed. Oh, I have been blessed, that's so good to me. Precious are His thoughts of you and me. No way I could help you. There's not enough time, so I'll just praise Him for being so kind. God has been good. He's so good. I have been blessed. Yes, He's my shoulder to lean on. When I am down, the rock where He leads me, when I'm overwhelmed, the place where He hides me, it's under His wing. He's not just a soul, He's the reason I sing, I have been blessed. Oh, I have been blessed, God's so good to me. Precious are His thoughts of you and me. No way I could count them, there's not enough time. So I'll just thank Him for being so kind. God has been good, He's so good. I have been blessed. shall make her boast in the Lord, the humble shall he hear me and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. And if you will turn to the book of Psalms 100. And it says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this opportunity tonight. I pray that you will take me out of the way, Father God, and you will make me your voice tonight. I pray that a Holy Ghost boldness will come upon me to speak your will, Lord. Open the minds and the hearts and the ears of your people to receive your word tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. The title of my message tonight is Power in Praise. Amen. So the English word praise has a French origin and it's prazier. And prazier means to prize. 
think about that. Bless and that Lord. gives us a glimpse of what the word praise really means. Amen. To praise God means to prize God. Amen. Amen. The word prize means to value, to esteem, to cherish something or someone. But it also means the estimate of worth. Yeah. Yeah. So when we praise God, we are valuing him. We are esteeming him. We are estimating his worth. The more you know about God, the more you'll praise God. But the less you know about God, the less you'll be able to praise him. Amen. That's where the Bible comes in. So if you want to praise God more, we need to have that one-on-one -on -one relationship. Amen. And with any relationships comes communication, time, uh, learning each other. You know, so we need to do that. And that goes with the word of God. Uh, David lived a life of praise. David knew how to praise God. Yeah. He sang psalms and played the harp. He pra his praises pleased God and brought his anointing on the scene with many times. Oh, yeah. If we don't have the anointing, there's no use in it. Amen. Oh, it's not about yeah. us. It's about God. Amen. Yeah. Job continually praised God, even in the midst of his problems. He blessed the Lord. When Brother Russell said that, I said, that's my confirmation. When he heard that his livestock, his servants, his children had all been killed, Job bowed down before God and worshiped. He didn't blame God, amen? He didn't set God to his side. So many times we put God on a shelf, and we come to him when he's handy. But he, we need to be in him, be in his word, 24-7, amen? He's not just some toy to be played with, amen? Even when Job was afflicted with bulls from head to toe, he didn't sin against God. He humbled himself. He humbled himself before the Lord, and God brought him the victory. In Job 42 and 10, it says, The Bible declares, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Unity. Amen. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Even though Job questioned, he never blamed. Amen. But he continued that praise. He continued yeah. to praise. It is our duty as believers of God to continually yeah. praise Him, yeah. to give Him exaltion, yeah. to worship, to adore, to give Him adoration. Amen. He's worthy. Even in our darkest hour, we should still have a praise. Amen. Paul knew something about praising God even in the hardest times. He said he was pressed out of measure, above strength, in so much that we despaired even life. 2 Corinthians 1 and 8. Yet he still praised God. Paul did not complain about the trials and tribulations. He endured preaching the gospel. He said, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Amen. Heartfelt praise moves God. It ain't a show. It ain't about me. It's not about you. But it's about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. It says, Paul and Silas' stops fell off and their chains were loosened. The prison door swung open and all the prisoners were free. Their complete deliverance came to pass, not because they griped and complained, but because they declared God's greatness and praising Him. Amen. So whether you're having a mountaintop experience, or a valley experience. Praise must never cease. Amen. Amen. Always praise God. Paul and Silas understood that praising God was not a function of the situation in which they were. It was independent. Amen. Yeah. Therefore, while they were inside the prison at midnight, they began to pray and sing hymns to God, and the prisoners listened. Yes. Praise will bring you a glorious victory when nothing else will. God will shake those circumstances that are trying to find you if we only put our trust in Him. God desires our whole heart. He waits for us to return. He longs for us to know the power of His presence over our lives. He desires to bless us more than we can imagine. His spirit urges us onward, calling us closer to Him. Amen. Two, seven truths about the power of praise. One, praise gives us access to God. Through praise, we have direct access. It's essential to come through praise. Two, praise changes you. Praise can change you if you allow it to. Praise changes relationships. It changes hearts. Yes. It changes mindsets and praise our focus shifts from us to the Lord, yeah. from problems to the solution, from pain to promise, yeah. and from hurt to hope. Yeah. Yeah. Praise is a relationship, not a ritual. True praise does not come from modern culture or a religious system. True praise comes from relationship with Jesus. He inhabits the praises of his people, Psalms 22 and 3. He dwells in our lives and abides in our praise. 
He just wants a relationship with you. Any relationship needs communication. Our relationship with Christ needs that communication. And if you're lost and you don't know him, he longs to have that relationship with you. He longs to have that closeness with you tonight. He loves you. Amen. Sometimes even within our prayers, we can tend to complain about our problems. God knows our hearts and he cares about all that concerns us. But through praise, we are focused on him, no longer allowing our attention to be centered around the struggles. We are reminded of what he has already done in our lives. We are reminded that he knows what concerns us and is capable of taking care of all that burdens us. Praise defeats the enemy. Judges 1 and 1 through 2. Now after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall go up for us against the Canaanites? First to fight against them at hand. God told praise. Praise to go in first to the enemy. Praise entered the battle. Who are you battling today? Instead of battling in your own power, battle through praising and the word. Amen. Amen. Praise invites his presence. God dwells close to us when we praise him. He lives there and so he looks for it. He inhabits the praises of his people, Psalms 22 and 3. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, 1 Peter 2 and 9. Praise paves the way for God's power to be displayed. Miracles happen. People's lives are affected and changed yeah. because God shakes things up through praise. Yeah. As Paul and Silas sat in prison, shackled and chained, they kept right on praising God. Then God set an earthquake that shook the cells that broke their chains. The jailer and all his family came to know Christ that very night. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bonds were unfastened. Acts 16, 25 through 26. You know, they wasn't griping and complaining and, and uh, focused Focusing on their problem, but they yeah. were given the one who yeah. uh, deserved the glory, exactly. the glory, and the yeah. honor, and the praise. Yeah. You know, sometimes we go through situations and we're so focused on me, what's yeah. going on with me, and we don't take enough time to just thank the Lord. We woke up this morning. We have breath in our body. We have a warm place to sleep. We have food on our table. We have so much to be thankful for. We have a choice every day. We can live absorbed by worry and stress on the fast track of busy life. On what surrounds us. We can tune into the roar of the enemy, the roar of the world, or we can ask God to help us take our eyes off all of it, swirling around all the problems, all the mess, and stop listening to the voice of others and focus on the voice of the Lord, focus on the voice of God, and we can look up to Him, the one who holds it all together and who, who holds us in the palm of His very hand. Amen. Praise is not just singing an upbeat loud song, but rather a faith-filled declaration of God's power and nature in the face of impossible circumstances that attract the supernatural power of heaven to bring breakthrough in our yeah. lives. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Our praise is a weapon, one of the most powerful you will ever use, but this is a weapon that only can be activated by your faith. Our words and what we declare have the power to change the situation oh, yeah. we are in. Yeah. In the word, it says uh, power and life of death are in the tongue. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise fits firmly upon faith. Faith opens the door for God to work for you and in you, through you and for you, to turn impossibilities into victories. Amen. He is able to handle all that you cannot handle. This was true for one leper Jesus healed in Luke 17, 17 through 9 which tells us of ten lepers that beg Jesus for mercy, but only one returned to thank him. Yeah. Praise also followed the faith of the blind beggar who told Jesus he wanted to see in Luke 18, 35 through 43. So to conclude my message tonight, so what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? We need to praise God in the midst of our problems, and we must do it, not because it's, what I can get out of it, yeah. but what he can get out of it. Yeah. 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 Your praise is what attracts God to you and yeah. it gets you into Woo. his yeah. presence. Past the court and into that secret place with God. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 
praise him because his ultimate goal is that you should bask in his presence and eat at his table forevermore. Amen. Amen. Praise him because his presence is more important to you than anything and everything that might have been keeping you from praising him. Every temptation, every trial, every tribulation, everything that you may be going through that might be bounding you in your mind. Yeah. God has it all under control tonight. Yeah, yeah. And he just wants you to thank him in advance for the victory that you're getting ready to walk through. He just wants to thank for you to thank him in advance for that blessing he's getting ready to give you. Amen. So tonight I just want to say if you don't know him, come and get to know him. He loves you tonight. He died on a cross for you so that you could be saved. That you could have that automatic victory through his cross, through the blood of Jesus. That you could have that automatic yeah. peace, that automatic joy, yeah. that peace that surpass, surpasses all understanding. Oh, yeah. He just wants you to have that. He loves you tonight. And he's just waiting for you to come and receive that Valentine's gift to you tonight, yeah. which is his love yeah. and his salvation. The best Valentine you'll ever have is Jesus Christ. No other love. No other love like Jesus Christ. He loves you tonight, amen? amen? And if you need a healing in your body, he's still in the healing business. If you need deliverance of your mind, he's still in the, the deliverance business tonight. He hasn't stopped. He won't stop. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he changes not. So whatever you have need tonight, just go ahead and thank the Lord in advance for that victory, for that healing, for that salvation, for that deliverance, for that child coming home. For that, that bill that's going to be paid tonight. Amen. He loves you so much. Amen. Let's just take a minute and praise him tonight. Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your salvation, God. We thank you that you've never failed us and you won't fail us yet, Father. We thank you that we may not see the outcome, Father, but you know what's ahead, Father God. We thank you that you won't and will never leave us, Father God. We thank you that we might be bound right now, but victory is coming to us tonight. We thank you that you have everything under control. Even when we cannot see it, God, you have I invite you to come tonight. Whatever you need, God has a table spread for you tonight. A table spread. Amen. With whatever you need tonight, God's got the answer. Whatever the devil might have you bound right now. I, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. I rebuke every evil thought. I rebuke everything that tells you that you can't come because you're not good enough or you'll never be good enough or that God don't love you. I rebuke that right now. God loves you and he wants you as you are. Come as you are, but leave changed, amen? Come as you are, but leave different because through his power, you can leave different. You don't have to live in that situation anymore, amen? He paid a price that you don't have to live there anymore. You don't have to feel that anymore. You don't have to be in that lifestyle anymore. Because he covered it all on Calvary. All the blood of Jesus that washes white as snow. Amen. And all the healing power that heals every infirmity. Every disease. We need prayer tonight, amen. We need prayer tonight. This altar's open. Let's shake. Come on, Brother Mike. All you prayer warriors in here.